Hello, everyone. And uh, today we are going to start reading the very famous book, the very famous story, The Little Prince by Antoni de saint exupéry And I'm sure we are going to enjoy this while reading this story. What we'll do is uh, we'll just share a, my personal, I'll share my personal reflection on this as well. And we'll reconsider some points. We will reponder some points on the very basic things that this story, this very novel or this very book uh, teaches us. And also one of the most important thing is that we will try a little best to think about various things uh, given in this uh, book. I've downloaded this uh, PDF copy from internet and uh, let's start. The very first image of this book is quite fascinating. A little boy with uh, uh, what we see yellow colored hair is standing alone on the planet of course some flowers are there on the planet a little tree is there some other stars are shining uh beyond the child and then this uh i don't know what what is this the, whether that is the sun or something uh another plant like that let's start with the very first note the very first note is always written as a, a sort of tribute to somebody or a sort of acknowledgement to somebody and let's read what does writer say here it says mm -hmm. to leon worth i apologize to the children for dedicating this book to a grown-up and remember one thing the word grown-up is quite frequently given into this book quite frequently used in this book and because this is a story that i have already gone through and that i've also gone through the very bad movie that is mad on this book and uh, what i have found is that a quite fascinating theme of this story or this book or this novel is uh, the world that is looked upon by the grown-up and the world looked upon by the children. The clash between these both different perspectives of grown-up and children is highlighted and how the very wisdom of children, the very image of children, the very creativity of children is destroyed by the creativity of grown-up in this world. So quite famous, quite frequently used word this is here, the grown-up. We'll reconsider this again and again. I have a good excuse, the excuse given for dedicating this book to the grown-up. I have a good excuse. This grown-up is the best friend I have in the world. I have another good excuse. This grown-up can understand everything, even children's books. I have a third good excuse. So this is the third excuse that he's giving to us. Uh, that is, that this grown-up lives in France, in France, where he is hungry and cold. Uh, he needs to be comforted. If all these excuses are not enough, I will then dedicate this book to the child who became that grown-up. All grown-ups were first children. This is quite famous quote from this uh, novel, from this story. But a few of them remember it. So I correct my dedication to Leon Wirth when he was a little boy. Okay, let's, let's talk about this point. All grown-ups were first children, but few of them remember it. It's quite fascinating line. It's quite philosophical line in itself as well. Because it, it, it points out that when we were children, we were creative. When we were children, we were independent. We were, when we were children, we were very much curious about things. But as we grew up, as we became uh, adult, and we started adjusting ourselves into the world there we lost our curiosity we lost uh, uh creativity and uh, innovation and uh, you know, all these other things that make a child uh, very much interesting and very much uh, what do we say colorful uh, the colors have gone from adults and grown-ups quite fascinating line let's go ahead Chapter one, uh, it just starts quite formally. When I was six years old, I once saw a magnificent picture in a book on the virgin forest called Stories of Life. It was a boa constrictor that had swallowed a wild beast. Here is a copy of the drawing. Quite nostalgic. He just shares a sort of memory. Let's go it. What does it mean? But the words are quite... Uh, pictorial or what do we say in other words quite uh, elusive to certain things that one must has to consider like a magnificent picture in a book of virgin forest called stories of life quite uh, 
fascinating title. And then uh, the boa constrictor, a, a wild beast, all these things, okay? We do consider these points as well. The very first drawing is that of a boa constrictor that has uh, that has started swallowing the wild beast. It was written in this. Uh, it was written in the book. Boa constrictors swallow their whole prey without chewing. Then they cannot move and they sleep during the six months of their digestion. I then thought a lot about the adventures of the jungle and then and in return succeeded with a colored pencil in drawing my very first drawing it was like this one the very first drawing she shares with us quite i think in the very uh, or the very first look we find is the picture or image or drawing of a hat uh, but let's see what he says ahead I showed my masterpiece to the grown-ups and asked them if my drawing frightened them. They said, why would a hat be scary? The same answer. Th this answer quite points out that the grown-ups do not see the things as the children, as the very uh, youngers see. My drawing was not of a hat. It was a boa constrictor digesting an elephant. I then drew the inside of the boa constrictor so that the grown-ups could understand. They always required more explanation. My second drawing was like this one. This is quite fascinating line again, quite interesting line by the way, quite captivating. It says they always required more explanation. Who? The grown-ups. Let, let's talk about this. Do grown-ups really need more explanation as compared to children? Or do, do do children lack enough capability to explain the things from different in different perspectives as compared to grown-ups? So it's two different phenomena again. The grown-ups advised me to leave aside the drawings of poor constructors from the outside or the inside and to interest myself in a state in geography, history, calculation, and grammar. These four subjects are mentioned, and you know what? These four subjects are supposed to be the rough subjects to even adults, to even grown-ups. Thus, at the age of six, I abandoned a magnificent career as a painter. I had been discouraged by the failure of my first drawing and my second drawing. The grown-ups never understood anything on their own, and it is tiring for children to always have to give them explanations. Quite philosophical line, quite captivating line that grown-ups never understanding anything on their own. That means the grown-ups are either too much busy in their own affairs, in their own, um, what do we say, engagements, in their own uh, assignments and works and life courses, so they don't bother to be quite creative into the matters that children become. This is uh, this is this is what I think, what I believe in. Uh, but 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 uh, they need to be quite uh, quite quite pondering in a sense that they need to understand what actually children want to explain and what they do, what do they need to explain and how do they see the things, how do they imagine the world, how do they per perceive the ideas or things around them. Uh, the grown-ups should never forget that. So quite, uh, uh, what is a lamenting line, this is quite a complaining line against the grown-ups. Let's go ahead. So I had to choose another profession. I learned to fly planes. I flew all over the world. And geography, that's right, served me well. Geography, because he visited different places. He flew over all different places, okay? I knew how to recognize it first glance, China or Arizona. It is useful if you have gone astray during the night. It is useful if you have gone astray during the night. Why, again, such an insightful idea this is here. See, when you go out outside just to stalk around, just to walk around certain places, you, you, you start looking at the world, looking at the same places from a completely different angle. 
But this line is not beyond, uh, limited to that idea. It goes beyond that in a sense that when you go astray during the night, that means you have lost the very path that the people wanted you to walk on and you have entered into the world where so many things are supposed to be discovered and unearthed or uncovered or to be found out. Uh, so that's why you will just go and regain your own curiosity to see the things more and more at night. Let's go ahead. I have had in the course of my life a lot of contact with many serious people. I have lived among the grown-ups. I saw them up close. It did not really improve my opinion of them. That means they once the grown-ups become grown-ups, they need more explanation from children. They don't understand the world from children's point of view. When I made one that seemed to me a little lucid, I hid them experience my drawing number one. That means the very drawing that resembled with the drawing of a hat. Actually, it was a boa constrictor, which had swallowed an elephant. Uh, which I had preserved. I wanted to know if they could come to a real understanding. The real understanding means the creative understanding, the understanding of the children. But they always replied, it's a hat. That means they never improved their understanding. After that, I spoke to them neither of boa constrictors, nor of virgin forests, nor of stars. That means no imaginary things, no things or nothings that could fascinate them. I put myself within the reach. Wow. Well, I put myself within the reach. This is a loss to the children. Uh, why it is a loss? It is a big loss because children, when they realize that their creativity, their innovation, their curiosity, their imaginative power, imagination power is not worth consideration by the grown-ups who occupy the major part of the world, major portion of the world, major ratio of the world, then suddenly they become demotivated and this demotivation actually pushes them to be fit into the very circle of the grown-ups. I talked about bridge, golf, politics and ties, all rough topics to the children. And the grown-ups were glad to know such a reasonable man. The chapter one ends here. Chapter two. We'll do two, two chapters today. So I lived alone with no one to talk to until a breakdown in the Sahara Desert six years ago. Six years ago. See the first chapter. In the first chapter, he mentioned he was, when he was six years old, he drew a picture, a drawing of the Boa Constrictor. But now this is another memory that he shares six years ago, belongs to six years earlier to his life. Something had broken in my engine engine that means something mechanical and since i had neither a mechanic nor a passenger with me i prepared to try by myself to make a difficult reprieve it was a matter of life and death i had hardly any water to drink for a week the first night i fell asleep on the sand a thousand miles from any inhabited land i was much more isolated than a cassowary on a raft in the middle of the ocean. Then you imagine my surprise. Then you imagine my surprise at dawn when a funny little voice woke me up. She said, please draw me a ship. That means a little girl all of a sudden appeared before him. And she said to him, please draw me a ship. Hey, draw me a ship. I jumped on my feet as if I had been his struck by lightning. I rubbed my eyes well, I watched, and I saw a very extraordinary little man who looked at me gravely. This is the best portrait I later managed to make of him. Wow, wonderful. Now look at this one. In the very first sentence, he uses she for that person, for that child who appears in front of him when he was uh, not even walking up properly. But uh, in the second sentence, in the second paragraph, he just uses a sort of pronoun he for that little boy. This is the portrait he made. But my drawing, of course, is much less ravishing than the model. 
It is not my fault. I had been disgraced in my career as a panther by the grown-ups at the age of six. He still complains. And I had learned nothing to draw except closed bars and open bars. I looked at this apparition with eyes full of astonishment. Do not forget that I was a thousand miles from an inhabited region. Now my little now my little fellow seemed to me neither astray nor dead of fatigue, nor dead of hunger, nor dead of thirst, nor dead of fear. He had not the appearance of a child lost in the middle of the desert, a thousand miles from any inhabited region. Finally, when, uh, when I finally succeeded in speaking, I said to him, what are you doing here? And he repeated to me very gently, it's a very serious thing. Please draw me a sheep. He asked another question and in return, in reply, just the same sentence was repeated, please draw me a sheep. Well, the mystery is too impressive. Mystery, who is that boy? Where did he come from? What is he doing in a in, in, in a sort of region which is uninhibited by people and miles away from the people? Uh, so what is he doing here? What is the mystery behind this? So that is the mystery. When the mystery is too impressive, we do not dare to disobey. An absurd is absurd. It seemed to me a thousand miles from all inhabited places and in danger of death, I took out of my pocket a sheet of paper and pen. But I remembered that I had studied geography, history, calculation, and grammar, absurd subjects, to the e children. And I told the little fellow with a little bad humor that I did not know how to draw. He replied, it does not matter. Draw me a sheep. As I had never drawn a sheep, I thought of him as one of the only two drawings of which I was capable. That of the boa closed, and I was astounded to hear the little fellow reply no no i do not want an elephant in a boa a boa is very dangerous and an elephant and, and an elephant is very cumbersome my place is tight i need a sheep draw me a sheep the mystery continues look at this one he drew the sheep for the child i drew them he looked attentively and then no that one is already very ill do another one. And again, see the difference is only that of horns. I drew. He looked attentively. Then, no, that one is already very ill. Do another one. Now see second one, the third one. Quite re resembling with the second one. I drew. My friend smiled gently, indulgently. You see, it's not a sheep. It's a ram. He has horns. Then the fourth one, I so I still refused my drawing. But he was refused like the preceding ones. This one is too old. I want a long-lived sheep. Then for a lack of patience, as I was anxious to begin the dismantling of my engine, I scribbled this drawing. Okay, out of disappointment, you may say this, or out of, uh, what do we say, lack of patience, you may say. Uh, but he drew uh, something different as compared to the previous pictures or drawings. Then I drew. Then I drew. That's the box. The sheep you want is in it. But I was much, surpri I was much surprised to, to see the face of my young judge illuminated. Illuminated means quite brightened up. That's exactly how I wanted it. Do you think that sheep are to be found in this country? Kirsha, why? Because at home it's very small. Surely that will suffice. I gave you a tiny sheep. He leaned his head toward the drawing. Not so small as that he fell asleep. And so I made the acquaintance of the little prince. So let's end this reading here and I'm sure next time we will be completing this uh, reading. We will be talking about different things, but up to this level, we just found that a boy, a man whose engine got broken down and he was in a sort of, uh, he just crashed into the 
land which is not inhabited by people and far away from people, all of a sudden he just sees a sort of boy in front of him and who requests him or asks him to draw him a sort of sheep. We'll continue next time. Thank you.